Good morning my darlings, welcome to a new vlog. I have woken up with somewhat of a spring in my step this morning. It feels as though actual spring is on the horizon, the last vlog that you'll have seen. If you're up to date was my greenhouse glow up um, and I'm just, I'm so excited to get out there and do some planting to check on my seeds. Actually nothing that I've grown so far in the greenhouse has shown any signs of life, which is not a good sign. <laughs> um, but the little seeds that I'm growing on my windowsill have done. However, I feel like they are, apparently there's like a gardening term that they are a little bit leggy. And I think it's because they're not getting the optimal amount of sun. So they're like shooting, trying to get to the sun, but they're very long and spindly. So I used to watch fashion videos on YouTube and now I watch gardening videos. <laughs> so I need to try and watch some kind of remedies as to how to make my seeds a little bit less leggy. But yeah, it's just nice and refreshing to have, I guess, a hobby that's not work related. Obviously I'm showing you what I'm doing, which is nice. It's a nice little byproduct. And from the comments, I think you guys are enjoying seeing something a little bit different. I think with fashion, we can all get a little bit oversaturated and something about fashion content doesn't seem hugely relevant right now. Um, but I think when life goes a little bit more back to normal, which is on the horizon, then maybe we'll go back. But for now, I'm just enjoying sharing my hobbies with you. And I'm just, I'm finding it so, therapeutic there's something so lovely about nurturing a little baby seed and hopefully seeing it blossom into something lovely something which we can eat in the summer gosh um <laughs> but i have to say being outside so much yesterday i was exhausted that was like quite a lot of manual labor <laughs> for me and oh my gosh my core was in pain and I feel like I need a back massage. I wanted to come inside and have a really nice hot bath and I poured myself a bath, put my Elemis muscle soak in the bathtub and then I got in and it was just mildly warm. <laughs> so annoying. Our um, One of our boilers had decided to not work so I didn't have a nice hot bath. I had a lukewarm dip in a tub of water, which was such a shame. And I really need to just have a bit of a pamper later on when the boiler's working again. I just feel a little bit <laughs> dry. I feel like my hands are a little bit dry. I definitely need to pop on some tan. Um, I've just got a nail remedy on my nails at the moment, but being outside in the elements, it definitely plays a bit of an impact on my skin. However, I have a product to share with you this morning, um, which I've been using for a little while. And I just cannot wait <laughs> to get this onto my skin. So this is, dun dun dun, this is probably the skincare product that I have been most excited to share with you for such a long time. So I've been trialing this for a few weeks now. It's a new addition to the By Terry Hyaluronic range, which I'm sure you will know <laughs> I'm just obsessed with. The obsession started with this, my hyaluronic pressed powder. I don't think I will ever reach for another powder again over this. It's truly just the most insane formula. And now of course they've got the hyaluronic um, foundation, there's the hyaluronic concealer which I'm going to show you in a second, and the whole range is just so effective and it seemed so obvious that they needed to bring out a moisturizer. Little did we know that they've been working away on this behind the scenes. So this is the Hyaluronic Global Face Cream from By Terry. I'm thrilled to be working with By Terry on this part of the video. Um, so yes, you guessed it, my discount code is active again. So you can use Josie 20 for 20% 20 off your favorite things from By Terry. I'll be using a lot of my favorites now. Um, so you can have a little reminder as to what the best products are in my humble opinion. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by popping this on because I like to give a little bit of time for my skincare to sink in before I do my makeup. I only woke up about half an hour ago. <clears throat> so my voice is still a little bit croaky. 
For a face cream that's so impactful, and I will tell you a little bit more about it once it's on my face, it has got the most lightweight consistency. I know some people um, don't like anything too thick and heavy, but then if you don't have this thick, luxurious cream, sometimes you feel like you're missing out on some of the product benefits. Can you instantly see how much more awake and how oh, much happier my skin is when I've got this on? So this has got a really nice, quite light, almost gel-like, but a little bit more luxurious um, than a gel. But it doesn't sit on the skin, and because it is so lightweight, my skin just drinks this in instantly. Okay, so now that it's on and my skin is enjoying the benefits of this, let me explain why this is such a game changer. So everybody knows that one of the best things, if not the best thing, for your skin, for hydration, and hydration is so important for everything for making your skin look juicy, look healthy, look glowing, anti-aging, generally just kind of helping your skin look after itself, repairing, protecting. Hyaluronic acid is the number one ingredient for hydrating the skin. And as you can guess from the name, Hyaluronic Global Face Cream, this little jar of moisturizer is absolutely packed full of hyaluronic acids which are going to quench the skin. So hyaluronic acid particles, they hold 1,000 times their own weight in water, which is just mind-blowing. And this cream contains eight different hyaluronic acid particles and they are three different molecular weights, which I know is quite like mind-blowing to think of, but it's really important that it has that because it means that it can penetrate the skin at different layers so you can get the benefit of that hydration throughout the full, is it epidermis? The full layers of your skin. The Terry call that their Youth Glow Complex, and I believe 38% of this is made up of their Youth Glow Complex, which basically means 38% of this is helping your skin fight those early signs of aging. I will be 30 this year, so I'm just thinking about things that I can do now that will start to help my skin to fight those signs of aging without having to do anything serious <laughs> to my skin and obviously things that I can do every day from the comfort of my own home. Okay, so on the back it says moisturizers and plumps, fills and smooths wrinkles and evens skin tone and texture. As we go into the summer months, I do sometimes find that my skin tone starts to get a little bit more, um, I don't wanna use the word erratic, a little bit more uneven. I am prone to dark spots, especially around my lips. And sometimes if I've had a blemish, it might scar my skin a little bit more than other people. This is really great at just smoothing that all out and get that even tone. Um, it's vegan, clean ingredients, cruelty-free. I wish that we could share the um, press launch event that we had on Zoom for this product because Terry de Gunsberg, founder of By Terry, was talking about this. And when she was explaining all the different kind of more scientific elements of this, the whole Zoom, which was, I think it was over an hour long, but I was just absolutely fascinated. All I could think was, everyone should only use this from now on and I don't want to use anything else again. You can use it as a night cream if you want to because then your skin gets to benefit from the ingredients and the impact of the ingredients <clears throat> overnight. And obviously while hyaluronic is the main ingredient within this and the one that I would say has the most impact instantly because I think you really notice and you really feel when your skin is hydrated, that gives you that instant, oh my gosh, this moisturizer is really working for me, that kind of feeling. This has also got niacinamide and photosqualine, I think I pronounced that right, which are real skincare buzzwords at the moment. I hear so many people talking about those ingredients on podcasts and in articles that I read and what they're really good for is helping the skin to learn how to repair itself and also to protect itself. So whether you are out in the city and there's environmental aggressors like smoke and pollution or out here in the countryside where you are more exposed to the elements like the wind and the rain, um, cold, even pollutants from nearby farming, things like that. Even if you live in the most pure area ever, there are still environmental pollutants out there and those ingredients really help the skin to kind of work to protect itself. It's almost like that expression, give the man a fish and he feeds himself for the day, give a man a fishing rod and he can feed himself and his family forever. 
So it's not just like plastering a layer of protection on your skin while you're wearing the moisturizer, it's actually those ingredients are almost training your skin to protect and repair itself. I know that can be a little bit overwhelming, so I would say the main benefits of this, super duper hydration, amazing protection, and just incredible for helping with those early signs of aging. If you do already have a few signs of aging that you're a little bit self-conscious of, I have got some fine lines around my eyes. This is such a lovely lightweight texture, you don't need to worry about it, about getting it too close to your eyes. In fact, it can almost replace your eye cream, but I do have a product I'm gonna pop on my skin in a second to share with you that's more eye focused, but it actually helps to smooth and fill out the look of wrinkles. I have actually just <laughs> realized that I've got a Zoom call in five minutes, so I'm gonna let my skin enjoy all of these lovely ingredients while I do my Zoom. Um, and then I'll come back to you in 20 minutes or so and I'll do my makeup with you quickly and then I actually have a cake to bake today and then we'll head out into the garden. Okay, it's about an hour later, I'm back. I am half dressed, I've still got my pajamas on at the bottom but I put a top on for the Zoom and bloomin' heck it is cold in here. Just made myself my morning breakfast smoothie. So my moisturizer has had a lot of time to sink in. It is obviously completely sunken in. You don't need to leave it on the skin that long before doing your makeup, but sometimes I like to. I like to leave my moisturizer as long as possible. Something else that's rather groundbreaking in my makeup slash skincare routine is this. This is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Concealer. So I mentioned that By Terry have expanded their hyaluronic range and this is one of those things which, it's another, it's another one of those things that once you start using it and you realize how amazing it is, you don't really want to use anything else. With everything that I use in my routine and everything that I use in life, pretty much, I like things to be multi-purpose. So this is, looking a little bit covered in makeup at the moment, this is first and foremost a an under eye concealer but it's made up of 87% skincare ingredients. So it's got the hyaluronic in there as well. And it's also got horse chestnut extract. So as well as having that initial immediate impact of concealing your under eye dark circles or lighting that area, it's also providing hydration, brightening those dark circles, smoothing out those fine lines. So it's basically your eye cream in a concealer, which is just amazing. I wish every product that I would put on my face would have those kind of benefits. In fact, actually most of the products that I use now do, <laughs> whether it's my eyebrow gel that helps my brows grow or my mascara that has ingredients in it which boost my lash health. My hyaluronic foundation is great for my skin, but if there's one area that I really needed a little bit of extra love, for me, that area is around my eyes, so this is amazing. It's quite a chunky pen. You get quite a lot of product in here. It's a clicky pen. I only click it once, and that is definitely enough for um, both under eyes. What I like to do is pop my big mirror up on the windowsill, and then I can do my makeup in natural light. So what I do is I just paste it, paste it, place it under my eyes using the brush. As you can see, there's quite a lot of product in one click. As you might be able to imagine, it's a really nice, light, creamy consistency. It's still very natural. It's not like a full-on coverage. It just brightens the under eye area. I would say it's like a light concealer. It's not a major, major high coverage, but if you want that high coverage, then you could use this literally as an eye cream and then add another product afterwards. But personally, I like to go for a more natural makeup look. To be honest, I'm probably not gonna pop that much more makeup on today. And this is absolutely perfect. I'm kind of torn whether I, whether I think of this as skincare or whether I think of it as makeup because you get the benefits of makeup, but yet essentially most of the ingredients within this are skincare. So as you can see, like that is such a dramatic change. Instantly, you look more awake. The under eye areas is lighter, brighter, fresher, instantly hydrated. Instantly my dark circles are gone. I'm looking in the mirror and as always, I feel like the camera <laughs> makes me look a little bit washed out. If I do have anything left on the brush, which sometimes it's surprising and I apply more pressure um, on my chin. It's obviously not designed for the chin, but I don't want to waste anything. So I will just pop that on any areas which do need a little bit of extra coverage, especially because I'm gonna be going so light with the rest of my makeup today. Here's a little close up of the product itself. You can see the brush applicator 
just so lovely and easy to use great to pop in the handbag in any overnight bags gosh overnight stays i can't wait for them to return and obviously this is a vegan formula as well and something else to mention is that it's really lovely and long lasting so i just don't need to worry about do you know what i used to always carry one of these brushes in my handbag because especially if I was going out for a day in London I would always find that my makeup underneath my eyes just felt like it needed buffing and smoothing during the day so I would put, pop one of these in my handbag to just smooth out that area whereas I feel like with this concealer it just concealer skincare eye cream it just stays looking amazing all day long i'm gonna be outside a lot today so we can we can see, see how this lasts okay i'm not gonna lie if i wasn't vlogging today i probably would not put anything else on my face but because i am i'm going to show you how i use the hyaluronic global face cream and this is close up of the texture not sure how you can see that but you can see it is a slightly more kind of light gel like formula um, I'm going to show you how I apply this as a foundation with by mixing the face cream with my Biterry Hyaluronic Foundation. So I've just got a little bit of the moisturiser, let's pop it on the back of my hand. Oh, and another thing, another reason why I love to do this is because then I can just rub any excess in the back of my hands afterwards and I feel like it's amazing for dry hands. Luckily this foundation comes with a pipette. So I'm just gonna do a couple of drops. This foundation is superbly hydrating as it is and incredibly buildable, but I feel like if you want an even lighter base for those days when you're just working from home, you wanna give your skin some goodness, but just have a tiny little bit of coverage, then this is perfection. And at this point, I like to pop on a little bit of lip balm. I will, for the sake of the video, add a little bit more colour. This is the Compact Dual Powder in Mocha Fizz. I love how these have got um, a little pop of something different in the middle. So my blusher has got a pop of highlight in the middle. My bronzer has a pop of blush. So really great multitasking products. I don't add bronzer every day if I'm doing a really light makeup look, but sometimes if I'm filming and I just want a little bit of extra shape and definition to my face, a bit of extra warmth, then this is a really nice natural one. And then my all time favorite, Amber Light. This is my numero uno blusher. Tiny bit on the apples of my cheeks. If you want to, you can add a little bit of the highlight in the middle. I don't do this that frequently. When I'm doing a really quick everyday makeup, sometimes I don't actually use a separate product on my eyelids. I will just use the brown shade from my bronzer as my eyeshadow. And it just gives a little bit of definition and color to the eye area without introducing another shade. So I feel like sometimes it just keeps everything drawn in together, which is great for a natural makeup look. Super quick filling in of the brows, just using really light hair-like strokes and some brow gel. Tiny bit of mascara. And then on these natural makeup days, I just finish with a tinted lip balm. And to be honest, that would normally take me about <laughs> three minutes. It's only because I've been chatting with you that it's taken a little bit longer, but I'm not sure how well you can tell on the camera because the lighting in that window is always a little bit harsh. But my skin, I've got that nice coverage and color, but it still looks like skin. I don't look like I'm caked in makeup by any respect. You can still very much see the texture of my skin. It feels quite like a Parisian makeup look in that it's very natural and yet you've still got that healthy color, that healthy glow. So yes, this is my everyday makeup and we all know that a good makeup day starts with great skincare and this is just my new little dream team. You can also use my Buy Terry 20% off on the, oh my gosh, the CC Compact. This one, which is in my travel makeup bag, um, is back in stock. You can use a 20% off on that, on the lip balms on the micellar water and the toners which i'm just absolutely obsessed with but if you are really looking to step up your skincare game thinking about those first signs of aging um, or you really do want to work on smoothing out the appearance of wrinkles ultra hydration then yes 
by Terry have just smashed it with these new um, launches. So my skin at this moment in time is not looking overly glowing. It's nice and healthy and mattified. But I know that in about an hour's time, I could start to get a little bit shiny. So as always, just finishing with the lightest dusting in those areas where I know that I get a bit shiny of the Hydra powder. And I always feel like this acts as almost like a bit of a filter, a bit of a smoothing filter, as well as setting everything in place. This brush is also from Viteri and the powder side of it is so light. It just picks up the tiniest amount of product. So if you don't want to be completely mattified and you definitely don't want to have that powdered look, then this is perfect. Do you know what I've just thought as well? That would make such a good gift for Mother's Day. In the UK, Mother's Day is coming up very soon. I feel like a bunch of flowers is obviously a lovely gift. Jewelry can't go wrong. But if you want to get your mom something that she's going to get absolutely hooked on and be so, so grateful for, that would make the loveliest Mother's Day gift. And I feel like it's not one of those products that got, that's got anti-aging written all over it. So it's not one of those things that might raise a few eyebrows, but I think mothers will love it. It's £60 UK RRP. But yes, you can use Josie 20 on it and that code is valid from today until the 21st of March. So I'll leave everything linked down below. Now I need to um, get dressed <laughs> out of my pajamas and continue with my day. So here we have today's very relaxed outfit of the day. I have been wearing this um, jumper from Reese solidly for the last <laughs> four days. Although today I feel like it's not warm enough for justice. So I might actually get changed into a different jumper, but I showed you this, was it Sunday's video? I think it was Sunday's video last week um, and I said to you that this was going to be the item that I'm going to be wearing non-stop even on those non-vlogging days and I literally have not taken this off. I just love it. I love that the sleeves are three-quarter. It's obviously looking a little bit scruffy right now because I have been wearing it solidly for four days. I've been gardening in it, relaxing in it, XYZ, but I just think it is the perfect spring top. I think Reese have still got 20% of everything, which is amazing and then as usual I have got my super duper high-waisted Amazon leggings on because I just love being completely tucked in they're so so flattering but yeah I'm a bit chilly I think maybe because I had my cold bath last night I'm just I just feel I feel cold to the core today even though it's not ridiculously cold in the house I don't know. So I'm going to go and um, pop a thermal on, pop a really chunky jumper on, and then I think I've got a couple of bits to unbox before I head out into the garden. Okay, change of outfit. So I popped my thermal on <laughs> underneath, and then this is a knit from And Other Stories. I like that it's not too chunky, so good if I'm busying around, whether that's gardening or cooking or working. And then I always like to accessorise quite plain jumpers like this with some nice gold jewellery. So I've popped on my twisted hoops from the Astrid and Mew Una collection um, and then my embrace necklace from the Astrid and Mew Una collection as well and then I think that I was feeling cold because I had bare feet so I've popped on my falk socks these are the woolen um, falk socks again that I got from Amazon and they're just really nice and toasty so this is my outfit of the day 2.0 and it's nearly midday because I'm having one of those mornings where I'm faffing about so um, I'm gonna go and try and do something a little bit more productive. I've just bought my um, seed tray that's usually in the window of the pantry area outside because my Brussels sprouts in particular and also my rocket are getting very leggy and apparently this is what happens if your seeds aren't getting quite enough sunlight and they're just really reaching for the sky literally and it's not good for your seeds to get like this. I think these are possibly gone a little bit too far but they still look healthy just very very leggy and a couple of the tips that I got um, when I shared this on Instagram stories was to take them outside for a couple of hours each day just to get them used to the fresh air who knew seeds could be so demanding one of my broad beans is doing something here in the middle we shall see and now I'm just gonna head down to the greenhouse newly organized and uh, water the seeds in there as well Ah, oh, here it is in daylight. If you didn't get to the, end, to the end of my last vlog. Gosh, these very much need watering. Oh, gosh, we have our very first sign of life of all of my seeds that I've planted and left outside. We have the first sign 
of life and it is one of my Cosmos which I'm really happy about because I would love to grow a huge amount of Cosmos this year. I think they are stunning. I've blocked that way up, Dickie. You're gonna have to use the door like a normal little boy. Follow your big brother. You can't climb over there, little boy. Oh, mummy, clear the way for me, please. Come on then. Come on then, here, Lynn. Yes. The outdoor peas. Well, actually, I only planted these a couple of days ago, so I'm not too sad. But let's give these all a good watering. Dickie, what are you doing around there? Come back, you silly sausage. I love how this area looks. So cute. Lots of you guys mentioned that I should not store my seeds outside, even though they are in their very jazzy um, <laughs> trays, because um, the damp can get to them and also they might get nibbled by certain little critters that might enter a greenhouse. So I have listened, <laughs> I'm bringing them inside and this afternoon, or maybe shortly, I'm also going to go through, dun dun dun, and here we have got my, I don't know if these are bulbs or if they're, Yes, they are bulbs for alliums. Um, loads and loads of seeds, oh my goodness. I have actually gone a bit wild when it comes to buying seeds. So these are the ones in here which need organizing as per the month that I need to sow them and also whether they need to be sown in a greenhouse or inside. So I basically need to organize my seed collection this afternoon. Things like broad beans, I still haven't got through my first packet yet, but um, Maybe I need to watch a few more videos on successful broad bean and pea cultivation. Then we've got some gorgeous bulbs, we've got some gladioli, dahlias, I can't wait to grow dahlias, um, a couple of different kinds of dahlias, and then we've got some of these jazzy grow bars, not too sure what's in here. So I basically need to just organise all of this so that I know how to grow it, so that's going to be a fun little task. Oh my gosh, the doorbell just rang and it was a courier dropping off this incredible package here from Molten Brown. I'm doing a zoom with them um, tomorrow, I believe it is. I need to double check that it is tomorrow and not today. And firstly, this crate is just perfect for storing various um, gardening items. But look at this, we have got the most beautiful selection of blooms. I think that's a Cosmos. I think this is... Um, I don't know if it's Immortel or if it just looks like Immortel. Ranuncula. We've got some Ranuncula. I think this might be a Californian poppy. All of those might be completely wrong. I'm still very much learning, but what a beautiful little selection of flowers. Oh gosh, what else have we got in here? incredible delivery from Ghana and Grays. We have got a little nibbling board. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering so much right now. So many of my favorite things. We've got some little falafel balls, hummus, cheese, oh, some gorgeous crusty loaves, some crackers, honeycomb whole grain crackers, sweet potato falafels, homemade banana bread. Oh my goodness gracious me. They've also sent over one of their three wick candles which even without lighting smells incredible. Um, and then where have I popped it? We've got a calligraphy kit for the events. Oh, that is so gorgeous. We have got orange and bergamot and look at the packaging with this beautiful floral design on there. Now I see the relevance of the bouquet and the blooms within there. Body lotion. This packaging is just absolutely gorgeous the classic shower gel, the eau de parfum, I bet that is absolutely gorgeous. Is the candle the same scent? Yes, orange and bergamot. Now, I can't remember if this is 100% true, but I have a feeling that orange and bergamot is what um, the naranji, it used to be called naranji, 
N-A-R-A-N-J-I, and I'm pretty sure. And that was the first ever scent that I really fell in love with from Morton Brown, but I think it has been rebranded as Orange and Bergamot. Ooh, and then I think this is one of those discs that you missed with the fragrance, um, and it really holds the scent. I might pop that in my greenhouse. <laughs> I must apologize, Molten Brown, for instantly lowering the tone, but because I just, I really don't, I really try to throw away as little as possible. I do like to reuse stuff. Call me Del Boy, but I, I just love to repurpose things and especially things which have come packaged prettily. So of course this crate is going to be used probably i don't even know it might become like i might even try lining it and turn it into a bit of a mini veg truck by itself if not i'll just fill it with pots but i have just popped the bits um here in here which need to go out to the greenhouse so i've got an empty um tub from my bath bombs from way that can be a little plant pot the top and the bottom from the candle can both be little planters. Because I've got so many seeds, as we've seen from my box over there, I'm gonna need a lot of little things to plant stuff in. These were the containers that my um, meal came in, the one fine dine meal that I cooked in Tuesday's video. So these are, again, great little planters. Um, I think I've probably got enough loo roll tubes now that I can do some sweet pea planting in those. Kitchen roll tubes, again, great. Egg cartons, fantastic. Um, and then this is wool um, insulation that was in the Molten Brown delivery and that will be great for packing around any plants which might be a little bit prone to frost. So again, I'll be able to reuse that. I'm always so blown away by the quality of Molten Brown perfumes. It's not its not a for an initial brand that like springs to mind with amazing fragrances, but they have so many, um, so many incredible ones. And this is quite unusual, orange and bergamot as an eau de parfum. It really is. I've just missed in myself such a nice, like fresh, zesty spring fragrance. I feel like I smell like <laughs> this bunch of flowers right now. They really are just so gorgeous. I think I'm going to use my picture this app and try and grow whatever is in this bunch. They just look stunning. Pop the candle up here. And then I have this rather gorgeous delivery here from Tory Birch. And for me, the whole Tory Birch brand as like a lifestyle brand is just absolute goals. I just love everything that they do from their clothing to their accessories, uh, to their shoes, to their handbags. It just absolutely everything and this dress I feel like is the perfect transitional dress that you can definitely layer underneath like I could most definitely wear I could wear this over the base layers I've got on today like thermal tights and a thermal top because it's quite voluminous in its fabric but then obviously you can just remove the base layers when it gets warmer so I'm imagining this for some of these spring garden parties that we'll hopefully be having I think we're allowed to mingle with six people from April the 12th, so I'm gonna have to start thinking of some outfits for outdoor socializing. But this with a lovely chunky cardigan, a nice little slim leather belt, I'm gonna try that on a bit later. That's absolutely gorgeous, it is a maxi dress. In fact, I'm intrigued. I feel like I could definitely wear it with today's base layers. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It feels almost a little bit like tunic-like. I feel a little bit like Joseph, as in Mary and Joseph. <laughs> With the right accessories though, okay, you can still see my thermal, which is not ideal. But with a cute little belt, such a lovely piece for layering. And then I also have a couple of home bits from Tory Burch, which I'm really excited to unbox because they very much go hand in hand with my hobby and obsession of gardening at the moment. Look at this. So we have this little collection of bowls which are like little cabbage leaves or lettuce leaves and I just think they are so dreamy. Imagine these on a spring tablescape. Oh my goodness. So I believe I have four of those. Oh my goodness, 
This could not be any more adorable. So this is the lettuce leaf design, but as a pitcher. So you could put a little cordial in here, a lovely homemade iced lemonade. Oh my gosh, but how stunning is this gonna look on a spring tablescape? This is just absolutely adorable. If you're into that whole cottage core vibe, imagine you have friends over in your garden party, you serve them little nibbles in these bowls and then you're pouring them drinks out of this lettuce leaf pitcher. This is what I mean about Tory Burch as a brand. Like they just, they just know what we want. It's just goals in every way. And the fact that it's pink as well. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to use this. I cannot wait oh, until we're allowed to have people over for nibbles and games in the garden oh my gosh and just as i was removing my tunic i realized tunic dress i realized that there was a belt inside um the inside label it was like folded over on the inside so you could of course add your own belt it's quite an explosion of patterns right now so maybe adding a plain leather belt um would be a different finish for this and i think a plain belt would look lovely as well but you really can't see it's super camouflage but i have actually added the waist belt which i've tied up in a bow which just gives it a little bit of shape, but Dexy, out of there, young man. That's where mummy puts her vases and it's not for snouts. Oh, it's Dickie upstairs. I think Dickie's snuck upstairs. <laughs> False alarm, he's fast asleep in the kitchen. Um, but yes, on one of those days where I'm not in gardening and house chore mode, with some nice little boots on instead of leggings underneath. You could definitely wear um, some like knee length boots. You definitely could wear a high neck underneath this. But I just love things like this. It feels statement and striking and yet it doesn't feel like it's inappropriate for wearing around the garden, wearing out on your errands for a day in the Cotswolds. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. So fabulous delivery. Thank you very much, Tory Burch. Gosh, and then one final delivery for today is this lovely kind of boot care package from Le Chameau. And Charlie and I just love our Le Chameau boots. They have so kindly sent us um, some rubber care for the Le Chameau wellies. So you've got sprays and... Um, I guess that's like a sponge kind of care for the wellies. And then this metal boot taker offer. So what you do is you stand on this bit and then you use this to um, pull your the ankle out of the boot, if that makes sense. They're really, really handy. And they've also sent over two of the boot bags. So these are really, really handy if you have muddy wellies and you're popping them in the back of your car. Charlie and I actually already have these. We have these exact boot bags. Charlie got me I think Charlie got them at Christmas time. So, Le Chameau, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to re-gift these to our friends Ben and Robin, who are moving to the Cotswolds, I think, like, any day now. Very, very soon. Hopefully Robin's not watching this video. If you are, darling, then surprise! We've got you some boot bags, um, because I know that she always pops their boots in the back of their car. Um, so I think this would be a very, very practical gift for them. If you know anybody that is also a fan of long walks and getting their boots muddy, then this is a really, really nice gift idea. Speaking of Christmas gifts from Charlie, one of his to me this year was a subscription to Pastor Evangelists, which I am so grateful for because I think I am the world's biggest pastor fan quite possible and today we have got um and i've mentioned before i like to have them for my lunch because i actually don't find the portions are big enough for dinner and at lunch i am always wanting to do other things rather than cooking so i'm only really willing to spend five minutes in the kitchen getting lunch together so that's perfect for this today we have got otranto which is a basil pesto and pine nut really basic you can absolutely make this yourself but i don't know it always just tastes so much better when it's from pastor evangelist look how dirty this agar is we need to switch it off to give it a really good clean 
maybe when the temperature warms up a little bit outside. So you literally just cook the fresh pasta for a couple of minutes, warm through the sauce, and then I will be adding a couple of spoonfuls of this um, pasta water to thin out the sauce, and that's it. It is so, so easy. I think I have a discount code for Pasta Evangelist. If I do, I'll leave it linked down below. Yeah, I think that may be the only drawback, is that it does take two hands to get it shut on the bottom. I mean, that's not a big deal. Um, it would be if I was using them all the time. Uh, to not have a thumb right here, uh, it's going to get shut. I need two hands to do that. But I don't know. I would probably go towards the end of March and... Mid, mid to end of March. Mid to end of March. So while having my lunch, I've decided that I'm going to make the most of my beautiful new crockery. So these are the gorgeous lettuce bowls from Tory Birch. And you may remember I also have very similar, these lettuce bowls, which were from Dalesford. I've got the smaller size and the larger size, and I just think they look so lovely all together. I thought I would do a little reel making a lemon and orange blossom drizzle cake in the Thermomix. This literally only takes 10 minutes of your actual time um, and I just thought it looked so lovely with the new flowers from Molten Brown so I've made a little photogenic um, intro shot for the reel which I'm going to film quickly now. Shouldn't take too long to make at all and it will give us a nice little snack <laughs> for our afternoon coffees for the rest of the week. So the lemon drizzle cake is in the aga. It's got another 15 minutes or so. I've just taken a few seeds back out to the greenhouse and I'm going to just pierce some holes in some of those um, recyclable, recycled containers so they make for better drainage so I can do... Dixie, get down! so that I can use them as planting containers. And the tree surgeons have just got here and they are going to be starting the removal of the topiary trees today, which actually I'm really sad about. They have got to go because they haven't been cared for very well. A few of them are dying or dead um, and we do have amazing plans for that area of the garden but I know that when I see just a row, god it makes me emotional, <laughs> I don't like change, when I see a row of tree stumps there later on this afternoon it's going to be quite upsetting to see such an iconic part of our garden go um, but I know it's all for the longer term good and I know that they don't look the best, they do look like, I don't know, scraggly, a bit of a scraggly attempt at um, topiary trees. So I know that they've got to go, but I'm still a little bit sad about it. Anyway, I've got 10 more minutes until the lemon drizzle cake needs to come out. So I'm going to stay inside while they start the chopping because I don't think I can bear to watch that emotional... <laughs> Why do I get emotional about trees? Oh my goodness. <sighs> Deep breaths. <laughs> Oh my gosh, let's go and see what they've been doing. Oh my god, they're all gone. They are all gone in the space of 10 minutes. Wow, that is a different view. I mean, you can really see how big the garden is now. And it's going to look amazing when in a couple of weeks we'll have an orchard down here. We're getting some new fruit trees in which is going to look amazing but wow that's a shock that is a shock i've got five minutes until my lemon drizzle needs to come out um so i'm just going to plant i think it's geranium but they need to go under a cloche so it's going to be a different style of um seedling starting there they go growing a few forget-me-nots and they have to go under cover so I've got to this plastic cloche and I'm actually going to pop it inside this window here in the shed where it's just a little bit warmer. Thank you. 
So here in our very spidery shed, I really hope spiders don't eat seeds, I popped the, there we go, chainsaw, I popped the forget-me-nots under the plastic cloche. I'm going to limit the airflow in here. Um, so hopefully these might perform a little better. And here we have my finished lemon drizzle cake. All in all, I would say that was about 20 minutes of my time. It was in the Arga for just under an hour and I've just taken a nice little um, photo of this setup here with my cupcakes from Blossom and Bloom in the foreground because they're just so beautiful and I just want to cherish them in as many pictures as possible. The new crockery is just insanely photogenic, so um, these are the new ones. I just think they're so gorgeous, absolutely oh, love right. them. They go well with our Delson ones. Yeah, they? they do. So I think that's a lettuce leaf and that's more of like a sprout. We do also have a giant sprout leaf um, in green as a bowl, actually. And we've got a giant version of this in white as a bowl. So yeah, I'm just obsessed with this um, trend at the moment. So that is a nice little snap that I've taken. Now let's leave that to cool down a little bit more. Um, and then make our way into the garden and see what devastation has occurred. What do you think, Dickie? Well, Mummy, I really liked those trees because they were great for hiding behind and running between. But don't worry, I trust you and Daddy and that you're going to make the garden even better for me. Well, that's it. They're all gone. They have been removed and this area is just looking so, so bad. This is... This is the hard bit because it's so empty and it's probably going to be a couple of weeks until we get more trees in and the hedge in. I'm trusting in <laughs> Nicholson's and their garden designs that this is going to look incredible, but yeah. It's a little bit bare right now, so I'm going to go and cheer myself up <laughs> with some more seed planting. So I've done my forget-me-nots and my white cosmos i'd like to do some of these pink cosmos now um and to be honest seeing as these ones are actually doing something we've, that's actually come up just today look this little shoot and that one's come up even more so i think cosmos seem to like the egg boxes so i think i will plant some of these um in the same kind of way just as i did those ones and then i'll have a little rummage around to see if anything else needs to be put under a plastic dome I've done my cosmos in the egg carton over there. I really like how this bench is just becoming like the seedling. This bench is just becoming the seedling area. I think once this is covered, I'm gonna have to move on to this bench here as well. Now I've got 40 minutes until we have um, a Zoom meeting, Charlie and I, and I need to get my video live <laughs> in 40 minutes as well. So I'm just gonna spend the next 10 minutes or so sprinkling wildflower seeds. So these apparently are really good um, in woodland areas. So I thought I would just sprinkle a handful over by where the ground is all upturned um, from the new laurel bushes and it'd be really lovely to see a few little flowers growing amongst the shaded areas there as we approach spring and summer. Hopefully it's going to rain tomorrow because it does say to water these in. Maybe I will bring the hose over just to give them an initial bit of watering. This is the mix that I'm going to be sprinkling. Is the way I pick up my vlogging camera to film and then it tells me I need to change the battery so I'm just about to pop something in the Arga for dinner tonight I'm feeling quite lazy so I'm going to pop in one of my all plants um, 
I did just publish a sponsored Instagram story for these guys and I was sharing that I have a discount code which is Josie15 for £15 off your first box. I've had so many of my friends trying this as well and everyone is in agreement that it is amazing and just, just so nice to have something in the freezer. So those nights like tonight when you want something that's not unhealthy but you just can't be able to do a load of cooking, it's fantastic. So what do we have to do? 38 minutes in the agar. And this is the protein power bowl with miso roasted tofu, coconut and edamame, power grains, sweet chili broccoli, sesame cabbage and a pea and edamame medley. Yum. I'm also eating some of my lemon and orange blossom drizzle cake while I do a little bit more unboxing and organize my seeds just as my little starter. So we have just had a delivery from 100 acres. Now I believe these guys are local to the Cotswolds. All natural luxury bath and body. Are you helping me little boy? Ooh, so what do we have here? Rose and lavender bubble bath. That sounds heavenly, oh my goodness. This smells absolutely spectacular. Three wick candle. And this is lemon myrtle, lavender, and cedar wood, oh my goodness. Gosh, what beautiful handwriting. Bringing a touch of British summer into your house, especially while it's so cold and grey. <laughs> P.S. Love to Dexter and Dickens. Oh, that's so lovely. Oh gosh, they have fully stocked us up. Body wash, hand cream, and hand wash. Oh my goodness, a lovely delivery. Thank you very much, 100 acres. Sorry about, the <clears throat> sorry about the background noise in that last clip, I've just turned the TV down. I'm trying to find new gardening programs to watch on Netflix. I've just found this one, I, think, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but they, they basically build garden structures and it's quite interesting. So I'm going to have that on in the background, hello little chicken, um, while I do my seed organising. So as I've shared with you before, I do have all of my seeds in these trays. Um, as per the month that I need to sow them. And then these are the unorganized seeds. So I'm just basically gonna go through here and organize them into month by month. And anything that needs planting this month in March, I will just have a little read up of the instructions and see if there's anything I can do over the next couple of days. So for example, okay, broad beans, I've already started doing a few. Um, it says on the back, you can sow January, February, March. So this is literally the last, last opportunity. So I need to pop those in the March tray. This is a mixture of herbs. Now I actually have done quite a lot of herbs already this year. So I think I might save that um, and do that a little bit later on so I can have a bit more successional sowing. Ox eye daisy. So indoors, March, April, May. So when it's three months i tend to just pop it in the month for i tend to just pop it down in the drawer of the middle month so i'll pop this one <clears throat> in my late march early april area obretia that's rather beautiful february march april may Ooh, so this is one that needs to have a cover over it so i might do that one tomorrow seeing as i got everything out <laughs> you helping me, young man, um, seeing as I got everything out to do the forget-me-nots today. So I'm going to leave, actually I'm going to leave that one out there so I remember to do that tomorrow. And I can use my, one of my other plastic cloches with this. Then your tummy making funny noises. Verbena. So this one wants to be covered as well. I need to use some vermiculite with this one. Okay, so they can go under the same cloche probably. This looks like Cosmo Seeds. Yes. So I can probably do a few of those tomorrow. Okay. Early purple sprouting broccoli. It says to sow March to May. I always thought that was a little bit later. So I'll pop those in um, this container and I'll do that over the next week. <gasps> Light green hydrangea. Okay, I need to put that in a pile to research because I'm not sure about hydrangea seeds. May to June, that's much later, so I don't need to worry about that. These I need to finish planting this month. 
Okay, we've got some pretty zinnias here. I don't know much about planting zinnias. Okay, indoors April to May, so we can pop this in the April drawer. We have got some busy months ahead. I'm gonna run out of space. I have definitely gone overboard. Shock horror, that's what I tend to do. Okay, so we have quite a collection of seeds which I'm going to plant over the next few days here. Quite a few little herbs. We've got some garlic here, um, some of which you can sow outside already, and apparently it likes shaded areas, so I might do some out by the laurel hedge. Uh, a few more Cosmo seeds, some more herbs, and then the plants here, which will grow into flowers under the plastic protection. So that'll keep me nice and busy for the next few days. And then I'm going to store these in this unit here, um, just so there's no risk of them getting damp or getting nibbled on. And then these are for planting later on in the year. And one of the herb collections came with this little booklet, which is all about growing from seed. It's just a little information booklet. So while the all plants meal is another 20 minutes in the Arga, I'm just gonna sit down with the little boys on the sofa and have a little read through of this. So I'm gonna end the vlog here. I'm gonna do a little bit of homework. Um, hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Again, another little mixture, a few updates, a bit of beauty, a bit of gardening. But yes, if you have any television or YouTube recommendations, I have been watching um, Charles Dowding. <laughs> He must be in his 60s or 70s, but he's su he's got such a soothing voice. Um, Hugh Richards, who is the Welsh chap, very, very knowledgeable, really interesting, and very beautifully filmed videos. I've been watching, I don't know her name actually, um, I know her husband is called Aaron, Garden Answer on YouTube. Her videos are really, really interesting. Um, there's another, there's a lady as well, I think her name is Liz Zorab. These are a few of my favourite gardening YouTubers so far, and I'm on the lookout for some more proper TV programmes as well as Monty Don, so I can just have them on in the background while I'm doing emails and things. So please let me know your recommendations down below. And that's where I'm going to end things today, darlings. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I will see you very soon on Sunday for the next one. Bye. Nothing.